Today I want to take a look at how I took this 20 watt, $10 LED off Amazon and was able to make filming lights for use at my desk. For now, so this video can be well lit as well, I'm going to go ahead and substitute this unit with this one because uh, I need the diffused lighting for the shots here. Yeah, isn't that much better? Now you might wonder why I went with this as a solution instead of buying something that already works or creating something from an existing unit that I don't have to really do a lot of effort with. And one of the reasons is you can get this LED in several different wattage variants. This is a 20 watt, it's middle of the road. I believe you can get this in 5, 10, and also uh, 50 and 100. And that gives me a lot of flexibility down the road as I make my designs around this. Now, if you were interested in using these LEDs in your own projects, there are several things that you should take into consideration. These are how you connect power. There is no SMD power on this. Matter of fact, you really can't have SMD power because the whole thing needs to be cooled from this backside. Now, how serious is the heat sink requirement? Well, I did some testing when I was first setting this up and I tried this heat sink and it was not enough. And I tried this heat sink and it was not enough. And I even tried passive I-5 heat sinks and they were not enough. So passive cooling wasn't gonna do it. And the only fans I had on hand that were actively cooled were stock I-5 coolers. I built a few custom computers for people and I always recommend that they go with a aftermarket CPU cooler just because these don't necessarily do enough. And I always keep the leftover coolers for no particular reason, but I had them on hand for this project, so I used them. These are easily up to the task. I think they're rated to be able to dissipate 160 watts, so a 20 watt LED is nothing. But if I do turn the fan off on this mount, I feel the heat radiating up, and I've even had this bar get too hot to be able to touch. So you really can't get away with pure passive cooling. Now, since I had to deal with this large fan, I ended up using the board mounts as part of the construction of a frame that holds it to my desk. Now, these are 75 millimeters apart, which didn't matter for this, but does matter for the future. And I was able to just go to local hardware stores and get some stock metal parts that I was able to create a reasonably usable frame out of. I have shelving built on top of my desk, so I designed these with a binder clip with a hole drilled through it, connected to that, so I can just clip it onto the bottom of the shelves and have it be fully positionable. Now, if you're still not sold on this, let's take a look at the difference between a 120 volts LED light bulb and my custom LED bulb. This is on par with this. They give out about the same amount of light, but I custom made this to fit exactly what I need. And we've now arrived at what it takes to power one of these. These are a 32 volt LED. Now that's not an easy power supply to just go out and buy. You, most LEDs are either 12 or 24 volts. However, HP printers have almost always been 32 volts. So I was able to just go out and buy a capable HP printer power supply and connect it to the LEDs. Since this outputs 32 volts, and this is a 32 volt forward voltage, let's say, I don't need to add any current limiting resistors or any other circuitry. This just works as it should. Now, powering a fan is quite easy as well. It's just a 12 volt fan. So you can get any old 12 volt power supply, like from an old router, and connect that right into it. So I can just use the it's a little adapter, this little adapter here, connect to the yellow pin, the black pin, and then boom, working fan, easy enough. Now I want to cover what was a surprisingly difficult aspect of the design, diffusion. I made a small gap in the diffuser on my light that I have on this right now, and if I move it around, you'll see how a shadow appears behind the light on my desk. So it's pretty crucial that I diffuse this or else I would have annoying shadows all over. Now, unfortunately with this, I also lose some light. You can see how much brighter this area is compared to this area. And part of that is because I have a really lousy diffuser on there. Now, if I take down the other light again, we can look inside the diffuser and see that it is literally 
pizza box with aluminum foil taped to it and paper towels taped to the outside of it. Just kind of stuck on here. And this, this is, it works really well, don't get me wrong, but I lose a lot of light in the paper towel. Now a much better solution to this problem would be an indirect light diffuser. But I don't have the space on my desk to use one of those, so I need one that scatters the light coming directly out of the LED instead. The paper towel obviously is non-ideal, and I have acquired some white fabric to use as a diffuser, which is quite a bit thinner. There we go, you can almost see my finger behind it here. And I do plan on using this, but I have another phase of this project in mind that I'm currently working on. So I've been working on another phase of the design for this that has a 3D printed part that snaps onto the bottom of this and holds deflectors on all four sides. I have this initial bottom piece printed out already and the way that it works is I have hearth gears around all four corners and the deflector will go into here and it'll allow to be pivoted. And on all four sides of the deflectors, I will have cutouts that hold in place a sheet of fabric to act as a diffuser. So this piece just clamps onto the bottom of my existing design already, and it works pretty well. I had to take it off for this video, and I broke it a little bit here, but that's just part of the iterative design process with 3D printing, so I know I need to have this continue up further to add support to the back of that. Now, while I don't plan on releasing design files for this phase because it's very specific to exactly what I've built here, I am going to continue this design and make a fully 3D printed version of my light fixture. Then all you would need is an off-the-shelf cooler and the LED itself. All the rest of the parts are sourced pretty easily. But that's going to be phase three of this design. I want to make sure I have these usable as quickly as possible. Matter of fact, these shadows here you're seeing are because I'm using uneven lighting. This is meant to be my left light, and I've been using a magnifier lamp as my light instead for a while now, because this project is just never ending. Well, I hope that was helpful to those of you who have an interest in making these kinds of lights. It seems to be somewhat of a pastime of people who are technically inclined and do videos to create their own studio lights. A lot of people seem to go with those strip lights and then stick them on a flat piece of aluminum or something. And while, yeah, that solution works, I, I kind of like this a little better. It's more compact. Uh, I get it angleable. There's no reason you couldn't do that with the other way. But this this feels different to me. I kind of like this. And it, I really like the single point of light, even though I'm diffusing it. I would have to diffuse the other light as well, although it would really it'd be easier. Huh. Uh, think about that. There's some merit to that. But there's other reasons to use this, like I was able to choose the color spectrum that this light emits, so I was able to get uh, closer to daylight so my colors are accurate. There will be follow-ups for this as I get these parts finished and as I redesign this metal frame to be fully 3D printed. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything for now. If you're not interested in making one of these, hopefully you at least found this entertaining. So I'll see you guys next time.